we're going to Shenzhen. We are on our way to the UNESCO World Heritage Site Koyazen. For over 1,200 years, this monastery has been the center of Shingon Buddhism and is one of Japan's most sacred sites. Baby, this is a food replica shop. No, I'm sorry, we're heading out today. Found it, honey. Still, you're on the outside there, and I'll be stationed. There's a sign nearby for the other side. Sometimes the labyrinth of tunnels and instructions are hard to comprehend seem to have a little difficulty in the train stations. And here's the confusion, Koya 5, but platform 4. Okay. Go find a guy. I'll just sit here. <clears throat> Always ask. So we made our train. It was the end of the line, so they emptied it out completely on one side and we loaded on the other. Yeah. <laughs> We're going into the great white unknown. Thankfully, the trains are mildly air conditioned. Uh, if the open window counts. We're on the train to Corazan. So to get up the mountain, here we get off this flatland train and we get on a cable car whose only job is to connect this train to some buses that can drive you exclusively into the town. This cable car system has been operating since 1930. Hopefully they change the cable once or twice before we get there. This is about a 10 minute ride through some spectacular scenery. So after we hopped off the train, we got on a bus number three. Only these buses are allowed on this road. No pedestrians, no bicycles, no cars. Yep. Yeah, 18. Doesn't that look like we go straight through? Right? Sure, why not? The map lights. Look at that thing. He didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Hang on. This reminds me of Rome. Does it? Yeah, same. Cobblestone streets there. I'm too overwhelmed to even take pictures. Looks like it. I 
I have successfully lowered myself into the torture chamber. <laughs> So this was the dinner that they brought us the first night. Very elaborate. Got rice in that bowl, tea, some fresh fruit. This is a pounded rice that's kind of gelatinified when I get done with it. Tofu's across from me in that little white thing. Uh, some of the dishes are made to look like meat, but it's all meatless. That soup right there, the vegetables and the broth are actually boiling over an open flame. The, the liquid keeps the paper from igniting. More, more uh, fake peat. This is miso soup. And I was surprised it was quite delicious. So these shrines and pagodas were located directly across the street from our accommodations where we stayed with a Buddhist monk who served us dinner every night. It was quite enjoyable. The only thing that uh, we found a little difficult was uh, sitting on the floor and sleeping on about a four inch thick mattress. It just didn't quite do us uh, right. We actually ended up cutting our stay one day short because we just were yearning to sit in an actual chair. But the scenery, the accommodations, everything was quite nice. Food was good too, we were surprised. Uh, we both enjoyed the meals that we had there, even though they were all vegetarian. In the mornings, we were treated to about a half an hour prayer ceremony, and it was quite uh, spectacular, the area that we were in. Uh, to have it very elaborately done, very large and spacious, it's really uh, as nice yes, as any is. temple it's we had seen. Out, honey. Uh, of course, they have people coming from all over Japan to stay at these places, and uh, they thoroughly seem to enjoy the worship service as well. So we're going into the largest graveyard in all of Japan. It was started in the year 586, I believe. And the original monk that founded this sect of Buddhism is said to be in eternal meditation here since 586, I believe, waiting for the future Buddha to arrive. In the meantime, he's praying for us. There's even a cemetery from a pest company for all the pests they killed. Roaches and whatnot. So, you can find everything here. I see a rocket coming up on the right. So there's a mixture of old and new graves. We're in the newer section right here. But I believe we'll be walking by older graves as well on this path. We took the uh, less than one kilometer path up on bus stop 14. And we're probably gonna come down the longer one, which gets off at bus stop 10, I believe. started off our trip this morning going on the wrong bus went the opposite way the guy told us to get off and then the same guy picked us up drove us as far as he could stopped got out ran around the bus got in told us to get off gave us the map showed us some stuff on the map wrote down the time the bus would be there to pick us up and then he took off nice guy very helpful as most people have been while we've been here
So you could spend days just walking through here. There's little paths off to the side. Quite amazing. Here's one with a bunch of prayer sticks around it. Toyo Tire has one. I think I bought a pair of Toyos once or twice. The bib on the Buddha statue is a request to watch over children in the afterlife. The custom is very popular and you'll see red bibs on many, many statues. There are about 1,600 trees in this area that are rated based on the condition of the wood itself, as well as the seedlings that they produce. They're all monitored. This is the tallest memorial in the park, reaching 6.6 .6 meters tall. It was built by the son for his mother, Lady Sugan, her Buddhist name. So you pour water over these and pray for your loved ones that are deceased. We just did that, Kathy and I did it. The bridge that was just off to the right there before I turned uh, led to the resting place of the original Buddhist monk who founded this area. On the way there, there's a rock in a caged area that is easy to lift for good-spirited people and hard to lift for bad-spirited people. So these lanterns light up at night, they're electrified. There's no filming past the bridge. So, of course, we respected that and did not film.
Well, thanks for watching another video. If you think what we're doing is worthwhile, please consider subscribing. That's right, you. Hey, have a great day. Bye.